Hi, everybody. It's Tuesday, November 7th. It's great to be with you. Uh, we uh, continue to focus on this idea of services, our 40 day challenge. We look to grow in that. Um, uh, and and um, this is uh, the, the really the last uh, uh, focus, uh, uh, and, and it's the idea of ambition, right? That, that this week, I'm, I'm wearing this shirt. Uh, it, it's, it's the shirt that our um, servants will, are wearing on Sunday mornings, but it's really something that we could all kind of put on spiritually, right? Uh, and, and it says St. Matthew here by the back. Uh, and this is the last time I'll do this for you. On the back, it says, Here to serve. And, and it, it uh, mentions this idea of sharing life. Uh, creating friendships and inspiring hope. That's how we serve. That's how Jesus served, right? When he stepped into this world, he shared the life of the kingdom. The kingdom of God is, is near, is right in front of you, right? He shared this life and he wants us to, to live that life to the fullest, right? In, in serving. Um, and he created friendships. He didn't, uh, as I'm fond of saying, he didn't set up shop at Hebrew University and teach 101, right? Come, uh, no, no. He called his disciples and did life with them. And that's what he does with us. And he empowers us then to make our lives, lives of relationships with him and through him with one another and, and live in this love of sir, that reflects itself in service um, and then he inspired hope he he took his his power and pushed back evil in in the world uh, and and uh, pushed back the brokenness and that, that's what we do as uh, both as the people of God uh, we we do th such things as as uh, feed my starving children or everyone matters uh, with uh, with kids and moms and stuff um, uh, and, and we do those those types of things together, uh, but also we do all these things to grow in in the discipleship we live in our individual lives as we as we share life, as, as we create friendships, as we uh, inspire hope. Uh, so um, so I'm, I'll wear this T-shirt. I, I won't um, I, I won't mention it again, but that that's why I'm wearing it this week to remind us of this this focus on service these 40 days. Uh, and so again, the, the I, I just want to read you uh, a, a couple of uh, texts today on this idea of ambition, because ambition can be used. We all have it in us. We all want to do great stuff. We want to be great, right? We want to accomplish something in our life. We want to make our lives mean something. I think it's so interesting to me that uh, folks who espouse no belief in God at all, that that uh, thinks that we just live and die and that's the end of it, they they still have this need to accomplish something in their lives. Why? Think about that. Why is that there? It's kind of crazy. It's, it's, it's if God put this inside of us, and I think he did, uh, from the very beginning, take care of the garden, right? Do something, accomplish something. Uh, and, and so he puts this need inside of us to accomplish something. Have this ambition can be good, be used uh, for good or evil, all right? So I'm, I'm going to read a couple of verses uh, from, from Galatians to start off. It says, so I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. So uh, in Galatians, uh, live by the Spirit means to live by faith. Okay, the Spirit of God touches our hearts with the reality that we're forgiven in Jesus Christ, and, and so we're free from the condemnation of the law, free to live as who we are in Jesus Christ. Uh, whereas uh, um, if, if we always live with the condemnation of the law, right, it, it, we, we don't have the freedom to really love as, as uh, the Spirit of God empowers us to do. So that, that's what it's talking about here. So it says, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. We have this civil war going on inside of us. They are in conflict with each other so that you do not do what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, if you walk by faith, you're not under the law, right? The, um, you, you're rather you're ad, rather under love, and you live in love. There's no... Um, there, there, there's no boundaries to how you live in love instead of just kind of filling some type of bar that's the law. So the acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery. Debauchery means you kind of live a life that has no boundaries. That's just kind of crazy. That's, uh, um, yeah, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of wrath. Here we go. Selfish ambition dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. Selfish ambition is in there. Uh, and, and so ambition then could, uh, could, could be used just to say, I want to, I want to accomplish this for me. And, and that accomplishment can be um, some horrible things sometimes, right? Uh, it can be moved by selfishness, 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 selfishness. At the end of it, when you accomplish those things, you know, sometimes it's on the, on the, sometimes it's just, 
absolutely evil on the face of it. Other times it's just about me. What I want to do, what I want to feel, what I want to, uh, you, you know, that, that type of thing. John. It's just everything about me. The end of it, by the way, we feel empty. It, it's, it's, it do, doesn't fill us up like, like we think we would. It would, rather. Uh, and, and, um, and so it, it accomplishes nothing that of, of, any, of any value, of any good. Now contrast this with Paul. This is in Romans. It says, therefore, I glory in Christ Jesus to my service, service to God. I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me in leading the Gentiles to obey God by what I have said and done, by the power of signs and miracles through the power of the Holy Spirit. So it's all about Jesus. It's all about what God does. I serve him, and I find glory in that. Why? Because that's what we were made for, right? Uh, there was a, a famous uh, songwriter, and he, and he wrote a song, and said, you got to serve somebody. Right? He had this insight. He, he dabbled in Christianity. He says, you got to serve somebody. And it's true. We, we, we humans serve somebody or something. We make something or someone a God in our life. Paul says, hey, I have this great freedom. It fills me up to be a servant to Jesus Christ. But then he says here, so from Jerusalem all the way around to Elycrium, I have fully proclaimed the gospel of Christ. Now, here we go. It has always been my ambition to preach the gospel where Christ was not known so that I would not be building on someone else's foundation. Rather, as it is written, those who are not told about him will see, and those who have not heard will understand. This is why I have often been hindered from coming to you. So it was Paul's ambition to preach the gospel where Christ was not known. This was, uh, this reflected who he was. Uh, a, a lot of folks have written about that Paul was a builder, uh, whereas maybe somebody like Peter, who, who shepherded the, the Jerusalem church, was, was more of, of building up people and growing them and so forth. Paul planted the gospel. He planted the gospel. He planted the gospel. Now, so you, you need both of those. See, Paul had his gifts. Peter had his gifts. Other apostles had their gifts. And, and their ambition matched their gifts in the kingdom. It was all about the kingdom. His ambition uh, was to preach the gospel where Christ was not known so that I would not build on someone else's foundation. That's not what I'm about. I'm about planting the gospel where it's never been planted before. And, and you know, he, he went all over the world and did that. And finally, right, he made himself nothing and, 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 he, was, and he was beheaded in Rome <laughs> for proclaiming the gospel. It was his great ambition to do this and he laid his life on the line. Uh, and, 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 and so God never, uh, chastises people for having an ambition to accomplish great things in the kingdom. <laughs> he didn't chast. There's no chastisement of Paul here. No, go go for it, right? Because I want to raise up Christ. This is how I've been made, and so this reflects the ambition of what I want to accomplish in the kingdom. Uh, and, and when when the disciples constantly argued about who was the greatest in the kingdom, Jesus never said, "No, no, no. It's it, you should never want to be great in the kingdom." No, time and time again, what did he say? The greatest of the kingdom is your greatest servant. He never said, don't be great. He said, you, where you're looking to be great, when it's about you, when it's about selfish ambition, uh, you, you, you miss the mark. Uh, but to be great in the kingdom is, is to be a servant, to, uh, to, to in a sense, know, know, know your gifts and, and, and think about what you want to accomplish, your great ambition in the kingdom. And God will use all that, right? But he never says to us, no, no, don't, don't have any ambition. No, you want to do great things for God, for his glory, for, for the good of others, for the joy set before him, it says about Jesus. He endured the cross. He had this great ambition to save you and me, uh, and, and, and he did. And, and he gives us uh, this ability uh, to serve him at, with, and, and, this, and this ambition. He makes it part of every human being. And for the Christian, what does that ambition look like? Not selfish ambition, but rather ambition for the kingdom. So you might want to pray about that today. What do you want to see accomplished with all that you are and have in the kingdom? Uh, and, and, and how do you accomplish that? Well, through service. What does that look like in your life with the gifts God has given you as you make yourself available, right? God can't use somebody that's not available um, with the mindset of Christ. So uh, let, let's pray. Dearest Jesus, we thank you uh, for, this, um, for this ambition you put in our hearts. We pray that for your spirit in extra measure that, that we might uh, not fall to selfish ambition, 
but rather the ambition of the Spirit to do great things in the kingdom. Show us what this means together as we're part of your family, how we serve together, but also in our individual lives. We pray in your name. Amen. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. May God be with you.